Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Rob today has a diary with a sample for a business email compromise, well, at least an attempt of one, not a very good one. The email, in my opinion, is pretty easy to spot as a fake, just based on the text of the email. However, as Rob points out, this email should never have made it into the inbox just because SPF, if properly implemented, would have dropped this email. And Palo Alto did a pretty nice job running down the background behind some recent Android malware. Now, when I first saw the headline, I didn't really pay much attention because Android malware, after all, is somewhat common. Now, this particular malware was actually found in the Google Play Store. But what was kind of odd was not just that the 132 infected applications were only developed by by seven different developers which appear to be related to each other but uh, also that the malware was really ineffective it tried to download a windows executable to the android phone also the main names used had been sinkholed for a while now what Palo Alto actually was able to deduct was that these seven developers apparently are using a development environment that is it itself infected. So any application being created with this development environment will include the malware and as a result will then bundle it up and will be published like this to the Google Play Store. So very similar to what we have seen with Xcode Ghost a little bit more than a year ago in the Xcode Ghost case, it was an OS X development tool that was infected and then included itself or included malicious code in compiled binaries. Something similar may have happened here. And Trustwave found an interesting backdoor in GoIP devices sold under the DoubleTech brand. GoIP devices are bridging GSM and voice over IP. Some of these devices, for example, allow to send bulk SMS messages or just interfacing voice over IP devices with GSM networks. Now, the backdoor is a little bit different than some of the other Internet of Things style backdoors. It's not a simple fixed password. Instead, the user is presented with a challenge and then the user has to either respond to the challenge or the device will send a packet to port 11,000 on a local IP address and then will receive a response that will log the user user in. Either way, given that anybody can calculate the response to the challenge, uh, that is something that Trustwave explains how to do. It wouldn't be that difficult for anybody to write a script to log into these devices and with this obtain root access. The user being used here, double admin, is not documented, so the owner of the device doesn't really have a chance to change the password for this user. Now, an attacker, of course, may also be able to set up that UDP responder in order to lock themselves in that way. That sounds almost a little bit more complex. Looks like there's yet another case where some form of debug functionality was left behind on the device. Apparently, there is an update available for these devices, but the update really just complicates the procedure. So it's still security with a little bit more obscurity than they had in the first place. And then we have more good news for ransomware victims. In this case, if your Mac got infected with ransomware, I haven't really seen a lot of this, but find SIP, sometimes also called file coder or patcher, has been going around and encrypting users' Macs. Well, uh, there are no instructions in how to decrypt your files. Malwarebytes came out with detailed instructions in how to find the key and then 
applied to decrypt all of your files. A little bit involved, these instructions, not really terribly straightforward, but uh, also not that difficult. And I think Malwarebytes did a pretty good job in explaining what to do. Maybe someone at some point will wrap it all up in a script and automate this a little bit more. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.